Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Camel, and more importantly, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Detective series. A series in which we investigate, curate, speculate, hypothesize, theorize, and sometimes just point out and talk about cool and hidden things in the Elder Scrolls games. Today's investigation begins in the remote, snowy reaches of Skyrim's Pale in a frozen, valleyed, and forested area of Skyrim between Dawnstar and Windhelm lies the Night Gate Inn. Some of you may remember having to come here for the Dark Brotherhood questline to investigate and kill the Orc Chef, Balagog Gro Nolob. Now this Orc had to hide in a remote place, so he chose this location, a perfectly isolated and seldom visited abode to hide oneself away from being found. But perhaps Balagog Gro Nolob isn't the only one hiding here. Inside the Night Gate Inn, it looks innocent enough. A nice quiet and quaint little corner, away from the cold, harsh environment outside. Along with Balagog Gro Nolob, we have Hadring, the rather friendly and welcoming innkeep, and the third and final resident of the Night Gate Inn is a rather unfriendly chap named Fulfdheim. And I'm going to say his name wrong a thousand times in this video. But to ease ourselves in, let's talk to the innkeep Hadring. Ah, hello there, traveler. Come to the night gate for food or lodging? This old place? Huh. Been here forever. Built by my great granda. Run by him, then all the way up the line to me. Nah, not so much. The odd traveler on the road, but mostly just old full time. Come to drink away a lifetime of bad memories, I'd wager. So, as he said, Fulth Time is here to drink away a lifetime of bad memories. Fair enough, maybe Fulth Time can give us more insight as to what the heck that actually means. Hadring got himself another customer, eh? You see any other inns around here? Where else would I go to drink? Sure, walk away. I wasn't talking or anything. He doesn't give too much away. Really, all we get out of that conversation is that he likes to drink. That's basically it. But we kind of get the vibe it's more that he has to drink rather than he likes to do it. So, Hadring doesn't give much. Full time doesn't give much. So let's get out our monocles and inspect his room for clues. And I must say, for a random non-quest character, he sure has a fleshed out room with a lot of specifically placed items. I definitely feel like a developer is trying to leave us some clues. So we know he has a lifetime of bad memories, and he is drinking to alleviate the pain of those memories. This is certainly backed up by the bottles of mead and the tankard right next to his bed. First thing he does after getting very little or even no sleep is drink some mead. That's not a good sign. On the floor we can also find bottles of wine. Again, they ain't there for decoration. There is also a lot of books and they have all been placed in specific piles on his bedside tables. There's no meaning behind the piles, but they weren't put on a bookshelf. These have all been individually placed and laid out by a developer, again, showing that some amount of effort went into decorating this guy and trying to portray who this guy is through the layout of the room that he lives in. So he likes to read, we'll get onto the books in a minute. I suppose most alarmingly, the closest thing to his bed is a steel dagger. A dagger right there, unsheathed and ready to go. In the same place that you might keep a glass of water or a bottle of lube. But hey, he's not a Dwemer. This dagger to me suggests that he's paranoid and expecting someone of a threat to attack him during the night or during his sleep. This is further backed up by the fact that no matter what time you come to the Nightgate Inn, Fulthlam is always awake. Unlike most NPCs in Skyrim who are scripted to have a sleeping pattern, Fulthlam does not. He just stays awake, on guard, expecting something. But what? Well, for now, let's have a look at his chosen reading materials. Harvesting Frostbite Spider Venom. Okay, he's a practical man. He wants to know how to survive and make use of resources. Herbane's Bestiary, Hagravens, and Herbane's Bestiary, Ice Wraiths. 
Okay, he wants to know as much as he can about the possible dangers he might encounter outside. So far, he sounds like a well-prepared survivor. Troll slaying. He wants to reply to YouTube comments. The Bear of Markarth. An account of Ulfric Stormcloak's short-lived independent reign over the Reach. Interesting, he's learning about the current political powers in Skyrim. The Madman of the Reach. A defense and insight into the Forsworn. Fall from Glory. Theories on the weakening of Skyrim's Thieves Guild. Ode to the Tundra Striders. A poem dedicated to giants. Report. Disaster at Eonith, an Imperial scripted dispatch concerning Uriel V's invasion of Akavir. This suggests that Fulfheim shows some interest in learning about Imperial invasion, or perhaps even Akaviri history. And we all know who comes from Akavir. Rising Threats, a multi-volume series on the threat posed by the Thalmor pointing out that Fulthheim has an interest in learning about the Thalmor and their threat to modern society on Nern. And finally, the last and shiniest stone in this pile of clues, the Great War. A concise account of the Great War between the Empire and the Aldmeri Dominion, a summation of the major events before and during the Great War. Of course, this highlights the elephant in the room, the Great War. It seems to me that Fulltheim has a heavy case of post-traumatic stress disorder. He is beyond middle age, is hidden away in a remote corner of the world, drinks away a lifetime of bad memories, has books on Ulfric Stormcloak, the Thalmor and the Great War. I think it's very safe to say that Fulltheim fought during the Great War. Now, before we can fully understand the unraveling of this next investigative progression, it's time for a quick history lesson. Skyrim is set in the fourth era, year 201, 30 years after the Great War. Now, the Great War ended with the signing of the White Gold Concordant. Among its terms included the dissolution of the Blades. This allowed the Thalmor to systematically hunt down each and every Blades member throughout the Empire. Due to this, Esbern and Delphine are the only Blades members that are known to remain. And with a legal contract for the Blade members to be hunted down and exterminated by the Thalmor, I can understand why other Blades members would want to not be found. <laughs> you know, they'll probably uh, hide away somewhere remote and hidden. Somewhere like uh, the Nightgate Inn. Well, it's a good fun theory, but... We need some evidence. Books and a heavy drinker just won't cut it. But there might be something that will cut it. Literally. By this point, you may have noticed another point. A point at the end of a very specific weapon, being carried by someone we've seen in this video. Equipped to this sorrow-filled old man full time is nothing other than a blade's sword. There are two other characters in the game that carry blade swords, that is Delphine and Esbern, who we just learnt, are of course the only two known remaining Blades members. The third NPC to carry one is Fulltime. Now, granted he could have killed a Blade and taken his sword, he could have simply just found the Blade Sword, although that is very unlikely. But would someone who wasn't a blade be flashing around a blade sword on their hip, knowing that the blades are on the Thalmor's blacklist? Would someone who isn't a blade be hidden and hiding away in a frozen corner of Skyrim, drinking away bad memories? I don't think so. And remember, Fulltheim has books on the Thalmor and the Great War. He's old but not ancient, which puts him in the perfect age bracket to a fort during the Great War, 30 years ago. He's drinking away a lifetime of bad memories, he doesn't sleep, and next to his bed is a steel dagger ready to go, again suggesting he has a great deal of paranoia and is expecting someone threatening to come for him. Such as the Thalmor. So perhaps it's not paranoia at all, perhaps it's preparation. If we scratch the surface of the Night Gate in a little more, we can find an inn ready to go. Hadring here, the innkeep, he's a nice guy, a nice old jolly innkeep. On his belt, he has a dagger. Okay, might be a little intense for a guy who pours beers, but whatever, you know, you gotta be prepared, right? Well, onto the bench is a huge steel warhammer which is really intense for an innkeep to have ready to go. 
and beside it is a book named Killing Before You're Killed. That is not a standard light reading novel while you serve customers some beers. This is a book on offensive combat methods to ensure you win a fight before your enemy. It's a hardcore tactical combat book. Again, not something your average jolly innkeep would be reading. Unless, of course, they had been warned of a possible threat by someone who was staying in the inn? Did Fulthime warn Hadring that people might come looking for him? And that Hadring should be prepared to fight to the death? It would explain the book. It would also explain the weaponry overkill of a dagger and a huge two-handed warhammer for a quiet, seldom visited inn in the middle of nowhere. Not only would it explain these suspicious and out of place items, but it would also back up the theory that Fulltime is being hunted by the Thalmor, or at least that is what he is afraid of. Now, provided Fulltime is in fact a surviving Blades member, who fought in the Great War and again survived the Empire-wide eradication of all Blades members, well, to say the least, he must have been one badass fighter to survive. There are probably some tales about his deeds and heroic battles. Now, building off those pretty solid facts and evidence, and also a bit of speculation, it's time we looked somewhere else completely. During the Dark Brotherhood quest, with friends like these, we are led to this abandoned shack in the frozen swamps of Morthor. Inside, Astrid will inform us that one of these captives has a Dark Brotherhood contract on their head, meaning that someone has paid the Dark Brotherhood to kill one of these people, and we have to decide which one it is. This will come into play in a minute, but for now, it must be pointed out that one of the captives is called Fulltime the Fearless. Not just Fulltime, but Fulltime the Fearless. Firstly, this is very odd that two characters in Skyrim share a name. If I'm not mistaken, they are the only two characters in Skyrim that share a name. And secondly, Fulltime the Fearless? What a name! Sounds like someone who has had tales of their bravery and badassery in combat told. Now while both Fulltime and Fulltime the Fearless are Nords, they are different ages and have different voices. We can pickpocket the hood off Fulltime the Fearless to reveal it is in fact a completely different person to our old mate Fulltime back in the Nightgate Inn. Now some suspect that Fulltime the Fearless is Fulltime's son. Some say they were meant to be further connected, perhaps even the same person, but that part of the quest was never finished, and their shared name is just a hangover from unfinished processes of the game's development. But I have thought of a much more likely explanation as to why these two characters share a name. Firstly, let's speak about Fulltime the Fearless and find out what he's about. I... I can hear you talking out there. Please, let me go. I've done nothing to you. Is this about that raid last week? I told Holgrim there was no honor in killing sleeping men, but he wouldn't listen. It wasn't my fault. I swear! My name is Fulltime. I'm a soldier. Well, mercenary, really. You know, a, a, a sellsword. I've lived in Skyrim all my life. That's all. I'm a nobody, really. So, can't you just let me go? What? Oh, God. I don't want to die. Please. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm a soldier. I've killed people when I was ordered to. Maybe there was some times. Sometimes I got carried away. But uh, war is war, right? Nobody could blame me for that, could they? So he is a warrior, a soldier, a mercenary. But to be honest, he seems very scared. He doesn't really seem that epic. He doesn't really seem worthy of the name Full Time the Fearless. He doesn't really seem like Blade's material. Now, if Full Time is a Blade member and again a survivor, I'm certain that tales of his prowess in combat and survival have been passed down and whispered around. So a mercenary might do well to adopt such a powerful name such as Fulltime, and make it even more powerful by making it Fulltime the Fearless. With that in mind, I feel that Fulltime the Fearless gave himself that name. 
after hearing these tales of the elusive and elite Survivalist Blades member full time. And I feel his boasting of his new name may have been his downfall. Remember, he is one of three captives, and one of these captives has actually got a Dark Brotherhood contract on their head. Now just imagine this, the Thalmor are hunting the last of the Blades. They are searching high and low for this ever-elusive Blades member Fulltime. The Thalmor contact the Dark Brotherhood and get a contract out on Fulltime. Then suddenly, this dumb mercenary is walking around calling himself Fulltime the Fearless. One day, someone walks up to him, Are you Fulltime the Fearless? Yes, that's me, I'm sure you've heard the tales of my awesomeness. Shmi shmi shmi. Oh yes, I know who you are, you're coming with us. Then Fulltime the Fearless wakes up, here in this shack, to be killed. Having been mistaken for the real Fulltime. What a dope. And again, this is all speculation, but I thought about it long and hard, and this is the most logical explanation I can come up with. It would explain why there is a Dark Brotherhood contract on this guy's head, it would explain the rather epic name for a rather unepic character, and it would also explain why he has the same name as Fulltime back in the Nightgate Inn, and all of that explanation just backs up the theory that Fulltime is in fact one of the few surviving Blades members. So although a lot of speculation, all of the puzzle pieces do fit perfectly into place, leaving no gaps to be explained. And yes, don't you worry, there is a cherry on top of it all. So provided Fulltime is a Blades member, which I am almost certain of at this point, he's drinking away the memories of his entire faction being hunted down and slaughtered like swine, the ancient and royal sect now outlawed. He is armed and prepared for the Thalmor to come looking for him, and there is one particular fashion he is not fond of. If we wear all Thalmor clothing on our character and enter the Nightgate Inn, Fulltime will actually turn hostile instantly. He is not messing around. He sees Thalmor and gets straight into action, because as far as he is concerned, we are there to kill him. During his attacks, he also says two very interesting lines of dialogue. Firstly, I haven't lived this long to be beaten by you. Suggesting he has survived through unlikely odds. And secondly, I could still put up a fight. Suggests that he was once a great fighter and he's just letting us know that he still is. Both of these lines completely back up the Blades theory. Fulltime's hostility towards the Thalmor uniform is evidence of his fear, hatred and paranoia towards the Thalmor, backing up that he is in fact one of three known surviving Blades. I can say that with all of this evidence and explanation, Fulltime is a Blade. Some may disagree and that's okay, but for me this guy is definitely in hiding from the Thalmor. So let's just quickly recap. He's old and the perfect age to have fought in the Great War. He appears to be hiding and suppressing awful memories by drinking his days away. He has books on survival, political factions in Skyrim, the threat of the Thalmor and the Great War. He doesn't sleep, the innkeep has more weapons than one would expect, and Fulltheim has a dagger ready to go next to his bed. And of course, he is one of three characters in the game to carry a blade sword, the other two being Delphine and Esbern, who are both Blades members. He also attacks anyone who is wearing the Thalmor attire. From this, I can surmise that Fulltime is definitely a Blade. He doesn't take a single day off from it. He is a Blade full time. Ha! Ah, so I hope you enjoyed the unraveling and piecing together of this curious character full time. This onion had many more layers than I had anticipated. If you have any information, facts, evidence, speculation, theories, or anything to do with shedding more light on full time, be sure to leave a comment. If you have any ideas for something that you would like me to cover in an Elder Scrolls Detective video, be sure to let me know. I'll look into whatever strange and wonderful topic you present. If you enjoy this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like. 
it makes the video look good. Leave a comment with your Elder Scrolls detective ideas and your theories about full time. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know people enjoy these kind of videos and will result in more of them. When you subscribe, be sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you are notified when new Elder Scrolls detective videos are uploaded. As for the Elder Scrolls detective videos that I've already done, their links can be found in the description of this video. Down there is also a link to my Twitter, Patreon and social media. Be sure to hit them up if you would like to support the channel. All of my time and energy goes into these videos I create and your support is greatly appreciated in whatever form it may come in. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.